Shalom people of God, it's your brother Travis and welcome to my YouTube um, channel um, Travis the Chosen One which I'm still thinking of changing the name to Perfect in the Saints but nevertheless I'm working with my spirit if you do see Perfect in the Saints pop up in your feed or in your notification just know that it is your brother Travis but I'm still praying about it but welcome to this YouTube channel as you can see the heading there or the title that it is called walking worthy and it's very important for us and this message is for our brothers and sisters in Christ you know I don't care which denomination that you are a part of once you are in Christ you are in Christ but you have chosen Christ to be your personal Lord and Savior and accepted his sacrifice and believe that he has um, died and rose from the dead and you're living a life that's pleasing unto Christ then this message is this message is for you and for all those who haven't um, accepted Christ as their personal Lord and Savior as yet, I would say, what are you waiting for? <laughs> but anyway, welcome again to the YouTube channel. If you are new here, ensure that you subscribe. And for all those who have been watching my videos throughout the years, I thank you very much for the support. And I'm grateful also that many of these videos are actually a form of encouragement, a form of reminder, a form of exhortation on your journey. On this narrow path walking with the Lord <coughs> Jesus Christ or Yahushua Amashiach or Yahweh Shai or Ahaya <coughs> any name you choose to call the Messiah our great high priest as in the order of Melchizedek so um thank you very much and guys ensure that you share um, these videos out to help support the channel um, to, to, to help support the growth of the channel and also to help spread these lessons and these messages all right so this month this so today's message or uh, today's teaching will be on walking worthy and the opening scripture that we're gonna start with is Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1 and it says here I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called and I want to tell you something people of God it's vitally important for us as child of God, the children of God to walk worthy of the calling upon our life that we must be walking worthy you know it, the sad thing is that people you know people, many people say that they're Christians and they think that just walking around saying that they're Christian is gonna cut it Christianity is a lifestyle and matter of fact I don't even believe in the word Christianity but when you hear Christianity you know what we're talking about we're talking about Christ the faith of Christ the word Christianity is man-made but anyway, when you hear the word Christianity, you definitely know what we're talking about. And so many people in Christianity, you know, especially the younger, the younger generation, they have this false notion <coughs> that um, being a Christian is just saying that you are a Christian. Or being a Christian is just about going to church and paying your tithes and your offerings and repeat everything that you hear your pastor say. But that's not Christianity. That's not walking with Christ. People need to know that when you choose God and you choose to walk with Christ, it's a very narrow path. It's a path that most people will not travel on. The Bible says that broad is a road that leads to destruction. And many will find that road and travel it. But the road that leads to life is very straight and narrow. And only a few will find that road. Only a very few. And I, and I, and I can say with no doubt, based on what we see in the body of Christ, that majority of us as Christians, as child of God, as those who even say, you know, even, even those who get baptized, is not truly walking worthy of the calling upon their life. They're still out there sinning. They're still out there hating each other. They don't even know how to truly live a godly life. Many people believe that living righteous is not necessary anymore. You have many people even teach that there is no sin. I've met pastors, or even one, pa one particular pastor said that there is no sin. And you know for a fact that these people are not walking worthy of the calling upon their life. Because when you are a true child of God, sin should not be numbered among you. You know, you should not be out here deliberately sinning and then telling people that there is no such thing as a sin. That's a big lie. And so in this lesson, we're going to talk about walking worthy of, <coughs> of the vocation upon your life. And, we have a, and I have about um, nine points here. And I'm gonna try my best to go through these nine points as quick as possible 
I'm not going to read all the scriptures that I have here because I always load it with scriptures. But I'm going to read at least most of the scriptures for precept on these lessons. So the first thing that we need to do when we are walking worthy of the calling upon our life as child of God is that we must walk in humility. It is very important that we be humble because the scripture says that God does not walk with the proud but with those who are humble. He dwells with the humble. Now let's go into 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 6 and you guys can pause this um, video and you can go for your Bible and you can follow me along in your Bible as majority of these videos that I'm going to do from now on will be <coughs> lessons and will be loaded with scriptures so you guys can be following, following me along to learn from the Bible. It's very important for those who are in the fivefold to know that their main objective is to teach the people truth is to bring the people back to the bible and not unto themselves to bring the people what the word of god says and not what they are saying all right so let's get into it let's so, so we, we have first peter chapter 5 and we're gonna go at verse 6 <coughs> sorry and it says here humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of god that he may exalt you in due time as you can see here, it says you that you are the one that should be humbling yourself. You know, many of us, we pray sometimes that, you know, God humble me. But I'm telling you, if God should humble you, in most cases, you probably won't like it. So better you humble yourself. Because there are times when you pray, oh God, humble me. And God start putting some things in the way to really humble you. It better you humble yourself than ask him to humble you. Better you take the deliberate um, initiative so humble yourself under the mighty hands of God. It's very important to know that this is a voluntary thing. That you have to humble yourself under God's hands. Let's also read. <coughs> um, let's also read Matthew chapter 18 verse 4. So the Bible says here what? Humble yourself under God's hands. And the beautiful thing about humility is that humility exalts you. When you're humble. You're much more e easier to rise, but when you are when you exalt yourself, you actually bring down yourself in life. I know many of you know that from personal experience, like myself, uh, you see other people's experiences as well. So we're going to Matthew chapter 18 <coughs> and verse 4. And it says, Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest, is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And so you see, Christ is saying here in Matthew chapter 8 verse 4 that we are the one that should be humbling ourselves as a little child. And that's how we can become the greatest, um, our, our name among the greatest amongst the kingdom of, in the kingdom of heaven. So I'm going to show you that people of God, humility and being humble is something that you have to do. And in order to walk worthy of this calling upon your life, you, uh, on your life, you have to have humility. Other scriptures that are here as well is Proverbs 22 verse 4 for time's sake. We also have Proverbs 29 verse um, 23. And we also have Romans chapter 12 verse 16. Which I implore you guys to go and read as well. But I'm just um, giving you these scriptures for time's sake um, to get this lesson going as quick as possible. Also, <coughs> in order to walk worthy of the calling upon your life you must walk in faith the bible says that without faith is impossible to please god but so this goes to show you that if something is impossible that means it will not happen so without faith our walk is futile without faith we can basically get nothing done or do anything um in this walk with god we're gonna go into Hebrews chapter 11 and we're going to read verse 11 you guys can follow me along in your Bible and I want to read something here in um, Hebrews 11 verse 11 where it says through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when, when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Now the reason why I point out Sarah here um, more than anybody else is not because she's important than anybody else, 
that demonstrated the faith but because of the last line in that scripture where it says because she judged him faithful who promised and so in order to have faith you must believe that God whatever God promised um, whatever he promised even in his words are true any from a prophetic word unto you that he is actual that he is also able to what um, because she judge him faithful who is able what what promise you must believe in the promises of God faith is the Bible says in verse 1 of the same Hebrews 11 that faith is substance and let me read it here for you it says no faith is is the substance of the things hoped for so faith is something that's actually solid though you're not seeing it with your physical eyes it is substance and substance is solid though you're not seeing it physically it also said that <clears throat> it is the evidence 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 is what something that what is shown the evidence of things but yet what not seen and so when you're having faith you must have faith in the words of God and whatever God has promised you must have faith in whatever God says if God says in his word in his words he will never leave you nor forsake you then you put your hope your trust in whatever God is saying the Bible also said in um, verse 6 of the same Hebrews 11 that be, but without faith is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is so you must believe that he is what that he is God and that he is whoever you say he is and also he says here and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek that diligently seek him so you must believe that God is a reward is a what is a rewarder do we believe that God is a rewarder that's how we demonstrate our faith when we believe that God is truly that rewarder excuse me you must believe that God is truly that rewarder whatever God says we stay faithful to whatever he says knowing that in due time we shall receive that reward so in order to walk worthy as the topic is today in order to walk worthy we must walk in faith so number one is that we must walk in humility and number two is that we must walk in faith all right then the second the third on my list here in walking worthy is that we must walk in holiness in godliness and in righteousness now this is very important because we have been taught that you know once once saved always saved and so many people believe that that when they get baptized you know they are saved and then they can go and live however they want to live they can do whatever they want to do you know they can say whatever they want to say you know they can live their own truth and not live according to what God tell them to live they want to follow their own will they want to do their own thing you know they basically want to you know live basically their will in life but people of God the reality is that when you have accepted Christ and you got baptized you also died for Christ and you know not living in the flesh but you also but you're living in the spirit even though you walk in the flesh and even though you walk amongst you know other human beings in the flesh you should not be walking in the flesh but walking in the spirit the scripture says that the work of the flesh is evident and the scripture name out all these things that are a work of the flesh like fornication emulation adultery all those type of things and he said that those who do these things that's in the flesh will not inherit the kingdom of God so many people believe that they can still walk in the flesh and still think that they're saved they believe that they can make it in by still walking in the flesh and that is the one of the biggest lies in Christendom the biggest lies that these pastors teach the biggest lies that these that these so-called prophets will come and tell you about once you're saved you're always saved and everything is just good good from there you don't have to do anything just live your life afterwards and ensure that you're coming to church to pay your tithes and your offerings because if you don't pay your tithes and your offerings you're robbing God you know they promote lukewarmness in the body of Christ and it should not be so because even Christ said in the book of revelations that if you don't he rather you be hot or cold but if you're lukewarm he will spew you out so even if you're in Christ and you're being lukewarm 
you can be out of Christ. So remember that. Do not live a lukewarm life trying to please the world and, and following this one save, always save, foolish doctrine that is bringing young people into more and more ungodliness. When you're walking worthy of the calling upon your life, you must walk in godliness, holiness, and righteousness. The Bible said that we should be holy, for God is holy. Now let's go to some scriptures. One of the first scripture I want to go to is 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 11. <coughs> So going to go to 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 11. And it says here, But though, O man of God, so if you are a man of God, or I say you are a woman of God, look what the Bible says you should do. You should flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. So these are the things that we should be following after. Righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. So people of God, do not be fooled. If you're a man of God, if you're a woman of God, then these are the things that you should be pursuing. You cannot live how you want to live. You cannot live in ungodliness. You cannot be living in fornication. You cannot be a, a liar. You cannot be um, working witchcraft. You cannot be following any demonic trends. You can't do anything anything like that and call yourself a man of God or a woman of God. Because the Bible says that he who sin is of the devil. So if you are sinning, consciously, presumptuously, and deliberately, you are of the devil. The Bible says it, not me. So do not be fooled. If you are consciously, deliberately, and... What's the next word I, I, I use? Consciously, deliberately, and intentionally sinning. You are of the devil. No, the Bible said that we sin when we, when we think it not. Sometimes we sin and we don't even know that we have fallen off into sin. Or sometimes, you know, things happen and we do certain things. But when you are deliberately going out there, sinning, knowing full well that you're sinning, you are of the devil. Let's go to some more scripture again. We're going to go into First Peter now. Guys, you can follow me along in your scriptures. I'm going to go to 1 Peter um, chapter 1. I'm going to read from verse 15. A matter of fact, we're going to read from verse 14. Sorry. We're going to read from verse 14 to about verse 19. Just to get all of that in one. It says here, As obedient children... You see the first thing that I say here? You should be a what? Obedient children. Not fashioning yourself according to the former loss in your ignorance. But as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. So this goes to show that you must be holy even in your conversation right here. You can't be out here running nasty jokes, filthy jokes. Um, talking about so, what, what is in somebody's underwear, what is under someone and so forth. And what we realize is that one of the most important things I heard, a sister said this, that the most important thing in this world to people now, it is what is going on under somebody else's underwear. The most important thing to majority of us now, it is what's going on in somebody's private part. People more is, is more concerned about that more than anything else in this world. Now, that's very important to everybody. But we who are Christians, we who say we are a child of God, should not be doing that. It also it says here in verse 16 now, Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And if he, and if he call on the Father, who without respect of persons, judge it according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. <clears throat> for as much as he know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot see that there so if you're walking worthy of the calling upon your life you must be walking in holiness righteousness godliness people 
are nowadays people nowadays you hardly hear sermons on ungodliness you all hear sermons on righteousness you all hear sermons of living a holy life you know nowadays is all about money is all about prosperity it's all about um fighting people it's all about what people say and what people think but it's not about how you live your life they most most of these preachers teachers prophets apostles and so forth they don't really preach about righteousness and living right they don't really preach about godliness and so forth because in reality they know in themselves that in secret they are they are not living right either so they cannot preach against themselves so they have to polish up things before people and teach sugar preaching to the people or to let the people feel good but they're going to hell going to hell feeling good but as a true minister of God we must preach the word of God regardless of how even we feel about it and how other people feel about it because in reality the only thing that will set us free is truth and not lies are sugar coating preaching let's also read one more scripture before we move on to the next point and it's in Romans <clears throat> I think we all know this one Romans chapter 12 and it says here I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that ye represent your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service so this is your reasonable service people to live a life of holiness people I, I i meet many young people who say they want to fi find their calling they want to serve god they want to serve they want to do this they want to find their calling christ one of the first thing before you try to find your calling is to do the will of god if you want to serve god the bible says it right here this is your reasonable service to do what to make your body a living sacrifice unto god holy and acceptable so if you truly want to serve God, the first thing that you need to do is to live a holy life. Is to live holy, godly, and righteous. So if you truly want to serve God, that's where you serve God. Serving God is not just going to church. Because many people are going to church, going to the kingdom hall, going to gatherings. But, they re but in reality, they're not serving God. They're just basically they're being around a crowd of people clapping singing shouting and then leave out from that gathering to still live for the devil you know nowadays people are more um christians or christian brothers and sisters are, brothers and sisters are more um they will feel guilty um not not going to church they will feel guilty not putting on a christian persona before people but they will not feel guilty when they sin they will still be out there sinning and the only time they feel guilty about their sin is if somebody else catch them is if somebody catch them if somebody find them out but in reality before god they will not do that before god they will not live for god most of us who say that we're christians we're living for man we're not living for the almighty and it is sad that we are basically being a christian a christian for the eyes of men and not for the pleasing of god so if you're gonna walk worthy um in your calling you must walk in holiness so let's recap before going any further to walk worthy you must walk in humility to walk worthy you must walk in faith <clears throat> to walk worthy you must walk in holiness godliness and righteousness the next thing that when you walk in worthy of the calling upon your life you must walk in repentance i want to tell you people of god repentance it means turn it means to make a full u-turn and turn away and it kind of connect with number three about walking in godliness is that you're gonna start walking you're not gonna walk in the life that you used to live you're gonna turn away from the sinful ways of your life and a part of repentance is also confession so you want to walk in constant you want to constantly be repent repenting confessing your sins if you're falling anywhere I always pray to be forgiven for any sins that you have done or any or any sins that you um, have done without even know that you have done it you know you must constantly seek forgiveness constantly seek to you know like cleanse yourself from unrighteousness as the scripture says that we if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and also to cleanse us from all unrighteousness so you want to walk in repentance and I, I should have put repentance and also confession because that's a part of repentance as well 
many people believe that you know confession and repentance is the same thing they tie in but they are not the same you know because many people can confess and they still haven't repent you know like i will confess to you right now that you know um i'm a thief right but i'm still stealing so that goes goes to show that, that i only confessed my sin but i haven't repented of it because because i'm still doing it so we must walk in confession and repentance i'm gonna read one scripture here and then we're gonna move it forward we're gonna go into matthew so matthew matthew mark <laughs> so we're gonna go to matthew chapter 3 verse 8 and you guys can follow me along matthew chapter 3 verse 8 it says here bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance now meet actually mean worthy of so it's basically saying here that we should bring forth fruits worthy of repentance and so we must be living a life that's worthy of the repentance so see what the bible say here that we must walk worthy of the calling so let's walk worthy let us bear fruits that are worthy of repentance all right let's go to the next one the next thing that we must do when walking in the when walking worthy is that we must walk in the fear of the lord now this one is very important now i'm going to do a video on the fear of the lord very soon as well to talk more in depth and what it means to fear god but i'm going to give you a little snippet of certain things you know in proverbs it talks about the fear of the lord is to hate evil if we fear god we must eat what god hate and we must also love what god love the bible also said that <coughs> i'm sorry the bible also said that the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom that when we truly fear god we become more wiser matter of fact it's already a wise thing to fear god but when you walk even in the fear of god you become much more wiser the bible says that god revealed his secrets to those who fear him and that's why you you grow more in wisdom knowledge and understanding when you walk in true fear for god like true reverence for god true respect for god you know many of us on this walk we don't really truly respect god you know we even go into the house of the lord that we want to do what we want you know that that shows no respect for god you cannot be in the house of god doing whatever you feel like doing that's actually an abomination to God and then say that you fear God you don't fear God if you are walking in ways in the house of the Lord because you know many people they may grow up in their parents house where they were unruly and so now they come into the house of the Lord being unruly too that's not how it works in the house of God in the house of God you must have true reverence in the walk with God you must have true reverence for God right and so if we're walking worthy of this calling upon our life we must walk in the fear of the lord and there's so much benefits in walking in true fear of god let's go um to proverbs um, 14 verse 27 you guys can follow me along it says here the fear of the lord is strong confidence and his children shall have a place of refuge that's true confidence let's also go to ecclesiastics chapter 12 verse 13 as i said that i will teach i will do a video on the fear of the lord um according to god's will very soon to get more in depth in what it really means to fear god so ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13 it says here let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter fear god and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man your whole duty is to reverence God and keep his commandments fear him and keep his commandments all right the next one that we must do when we are walking worthy of the calling upon our life is that we must walk in love we must walk in love now <laughs> The people people always make a mistake of thinking that love is just a feeling the truth is love is an action because if you love someone if you love God and if you love even even man you will not do evil unto them 
you know do not get the the the, the concept of love especially when it comes to god or uh, the things of god i have just i've just a feeling love is not just a feeling because many people can say that they love you and that they feel this thing in their heart for you but at the same time they do you evil many people can say that they love you and they feel this thing in their heart for you yet they walk around and be a false witness on you they tell lies on you you know they try to trip you up and set you up so love is not a feeling it's an action if you love your neighbor you will not steal from them you will not lie on them you will not lie to them you will not um covet them for their wife or covet them for their husband the lord teaches that the lord tell us about how we demonstrate love and the same thing when it comes to god when you love god you will not put another god before him you will not use his name in vain you know you will not um you will not profane his holy days that's what the lord the, 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 that's what the, 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 the lord show you the lord show you that loving god is actually an action it's not something you just walk around saying that i feel this feeling in my heart that has nothing to do with love that has nothing to do with love haven't you been in relationships i'm I, i'm sure that many of us have been in relationships with people say that they love us but by their action it shows that they hate us they said they love us and they're they're they're, they're trying to trip us up so love is no uh, is, is no feeling people of god love is an action well some scriptures here because without love we it's like it does not make sense we're gonna go into first corinthians chapter 13 first corinthians chapter 13 i'm gonna read verse 4 to verse uh, verse 8 and it says here and when the word use charity the, the word is is talking about love so it says charity suffer it long and is kind charity envy it not so you see here that if you have love you cannot be envious of people let's continue charity van um vain it or van it not itself it's not puffed up it do not behave itself unseemly seek it not or horn is not easily provoked think it no evil rejoice not in iniquity so if you have love you can't be loving and rejoicing in iniquity rejoicing in sins rejoicing in transgression against god if you say you have love and at the same time you you rejoice in in iniquity you don't have real love let's continue but rejoiceth in the truth so when you have real love people of god the word is so magnificent when you have love you're gonna also love to hear the truth if you realize people who have who are full of hatred and full of of you know you know what, what we what we call in the world negative energy they hate to hear truth when they hear truth truth irritate them you cannot speak truth before them these people don't have real love in their heart they don't have love people who, 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 who don't who, who rejoice in iniquity but do not rejoice in truth they don't have true love don't let them do not be fooled by the feeling talk about the feeling in my heart feeling in my heart has nothing to do with love let's continue to read verse 7 beareth all things believeth all things hope all things endureth all things charity never faileth so you see that love never fails i'm gonna read the rest of it it says but whether there be prophecies they shall fail whether there be tongues they shall cease whether there be knowledge it shall vanish away so you see here it's showing you what love is love has nothing to do with feelings if you have love if you say you have love at the same time you envy you don't have love if you say you have love at the same time you're puffed up you don't have love if you say you have love but at the same time you rejoice in iniquity you don't have love if you say you have love and you do not like truth you do not rejoice in truth you hate truth you don't have love so don't let the, don't don't let this 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 feeling talk fool you we live in a age now where feeling preaching is being preached more than, more than factual preaching the feeling preaching is preached more than the truth itself people hardly teach about the truth they teach about appealing to your feelings but feelings are not gonna get you into heaven you can you, you you can even go to god and say god i feel this in my heart towards you but at the same time you're serving satan god don't care about how you feel he wants to know that you are obeying him 
if you say I love God but at the same time you obey Satan where is the love if you say that you love me at the same time you want to kill me where is that love do not be fooled love is no feeling love is an action word so if we're gonna walk worthy of the calling in our life we must walk in love there's also a scripture that says let me see if I can find the scripture we're gonna go into okay bear with me a bit I'm gonna find the scripture here um, gonna find it here it's in first john chapter 3 verse 10 i'm gonna read it here you can follow me along first john chapter 3 verse 10 and it says here in this the children of god are manifest and the children of the devil so this is gonna show you the difference between those who are children of god and those who are children of the devil this is scripture right here let's read the scripture <laughs> i'm not i'm not the one saying this right here it is this is god's word so let's read god's word and see what god's word says also ever do it not righteousness is not of god so that's the one thing we need to know that those who do not want to live right they are not of god do not be fooled by these people who say that they are christians but they do not want to live right they are not of god and look what the bible says say again neither he that loveth not his brother so these things show you the difference between the children of god and the children of the devil if you do not want to live right that's why i say that you should walk in righteousness if you do not want to live right you're not of god the bible says be not deceived he that do it right is righteous so those who do not want to live right they are not righteous and those who do not want to practice righteousness is not of God scripture is clear the Bible also says that if you do not love your brother you're not of God either so we need to start looking into things are you serving God are you serving the devil are you walking in the ways of the Lord are you walking in the ways of the devil people do not be fooled the Word of God is absolute the Word of God is true over every other word no man is truth i am not the truth no other pastor preacher is the truth god is truth christ is truth and we must follow his ways and stand on his precepts not ours so let's not be fooled people of god if you have love you're of god the true love that's not only feeling not about what you feel but how you act how you act and how you live all right so if we're walking worthy of the calling upon our life, we must walk in love. Love of God, which is the first love, which the Bible says we should, we, should, we should not lose our first love, and also love of man. And if you say that you love God, if you say that you love man, but at the same time, you're hating them, you, 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 you want to kill them, you want to lie to them, you want to do off of more witchcraft on them you don't love you, you don't have no love do not fool yourself about feelings all right next thing that we need to do when walking worthy of the calling upon our life is that we must walk in forgiveness we must walk in forgiveness we must forgive to be forgiven look i know it's not it's not easy i know many of us probably go through certain traumas in life some of us probably get abused some of us probably been betrayed some of us go through some somebody wrong us or somebody hurt us in some way but the but the thing is you have to let go of them you have to let go of what they have done to you you have to forgive them forgive them is not so that they can feel big but it's for you to move your life forward because if you walk in unforgiveness it's highly likely that god will not forgive you and we have done things in life against people and also against God that we would want forgiveness also so let us do unto others as we would want them to do unto us now when we talk about forgiveness I'm not talking about just forgiving people and then go around them for them to hurt you again no you let them go off your heart even if you have to tell them that you forgive them 
but it does not mean that you should still stick around them for them to hurt you again because the Bible says in Timothy which I'm gonna find I'm gonna find it I think it's in 2nd Timothy let me find it first so it's 2nd Timothy chapter 3 verse 1 to 5 which we're gonna read here before we go into the forgiveness um, scripture so it's 2nd Timothy chapter 3 verse 1 to 5 what it says here this also know that in the last days perilous time shall come for men shall be lovers of their own selves covetous boasters proud blasphemers disobedient to parents unthankful unholy without natural affection truth be breakers right so somebody break your trust false accusers people telling lies on you incontinent fierce despisers of those that are good so you're gonna have people who are gonna hate people all because you're good i've met people who don't like me and i don't and, and, and another person that keep company i've i met people who hate me all because i'm one away i i met people who hate me not because i do them anything but because i choose peace you're gonna pe you're gonna meet even christians who say that they have the holy spirit but at the same time when you bear the fruit of the spirit they hate you when you have peace when you have um long suffering when you have these attributes of, 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 of the spirit they don't like you because you are bearing the fruit you're humble you 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 you, you, you you're a person you, you, you you're not mixed up in arguments you're not mixed up in drama you're not mixed up in gossiping people or not like that you're gonna have people hate you because of that the bible says that the wicked watch the righteous and seek to slay him so you're gonna have people out here who are really wicked we're gonna watch people who are living right i want to destroy them so look what the bible says here again so it says here despisers of those that are good traitors heady high-minded lovers of pleasures more than lovers of god having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away so when you forgive people we're talking about forgiveness right so when you forgive someone it does not mean that you should still be around them the bible says from such you turn away so if you find out that they are any one of these if you find out that they are truth breakers they are false accusers they are despising you because of because you're good because you're trying to live right you know they have a form of godliness you know they, they love pleasure more than god if you find these things about find out these things about them you don't you're not obligated to stay around them but you have to forgive them if they are, if they are break broken your trust forgive them but it does not mean that you should stay around them okay so the bible says from such people you turn away it does not mean you should sit around them so when you forgive it does not mean that you should sit around them and let them hurt you again you should not be a fool the bible says that the wise see the danger and conceal himself but the fool he, he, just, he just carry on same way so don't be a fool be wise when you see the danger in people you conceal yourself when you see that people are evil and um do not want to live right when you, see, when you find out brothers and sisters out there who want to live a lascivious life and a loose life you know the bible says just turn away from them but we're talking about forgiveness here so when you forgive it does not mean that you should still be sitting around them for them to hurt you more and more so we're going to go into matthew chapter 18 verse 22 and it says here um jesus said unto him i say not unto thee until seven times but until 70 times seven so this is how much we should forgive so if somebody hurt us 70 times forgive them Forgive them and move it along. Forgive and move it along. Alright? So when we walk in worthy of the calm upon our life, we must forgive. We must forgive. Alright. The next thing that we must do when walking worthy of the calm upon our life is that we must walk in the spirit. Now these kind of tie in with um, walking in, in righteousness as well. But we want to talk, we want to pinpoint the spirit part that we must be walking in the spirit. We're gonna go into Galatians chapter sixty, no, chapter five, 
verse 16 remember to follow me along in your scriptures or at least write down these scriptures that when you are alone you can reflect on these scriptures it's vitally important that if you want to build your faith you cannot build your faith by my words you only can build your faith by the words of God the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God so you, your faith cannot be built by what I'm saying your faith only can be built by God's word I can only exhort and teach but your faith is built by the word of God so let's get into it so I say Galatians Galatians why am I not finding Galatians it's hiding from me give me give me give me a moment there Galatians is hiding from me these Galatians I don't know why they're hiding <laughs> Alright, found it. So Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. I want to read from verse 16 to verse um, 25. Alright? So let's let's get, get into it quick. It says, I say then, this I say then, walk in the spirit. Um and ye shall not fulfill the loss of the flesh. For the flesh lost it against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. So there's a war. Um, and these are contrary to one, to one to another, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. So let's talk about those of the flesh now. Uh, adultery, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, um, idolatry witchcraft hatred variance emulation wrath strive sedition heresies envying murder drunkenness reviling and such like of the which i tell you before as i have also told you in time past that they which do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of god so we need to know that those who are doing these things will not inherit the kingdom of god people of god do not be fooled scripture is clear but the Bible says here, but the, fruit, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. So if you are Christ, if you are in Christ, the Bible says here, if you are in Christ, you have crucified the flesh. What is the flesh? And the things of the flesh, the Bible says it right here again. It gives you all the works of the flesh and show you that they are evident. So if you are in Christ, you must be crucifying the flesh with its affections and the loss of the flesh. You get that? Christ is coming back for those who are in him. And let's read the Bible again. It says, and they that are Christ. So if you are in Christ, Christ is coming back for you. Not for those who are want to... Um, enjoy the things of the flesh Christ gave us a choice he gave us a choice sorry all right then so let's also read verse 25 now and it says here if we live in the spirit let us also walk in the spirit all right so if you want to walk worthy of the calling upon your life you must be walking in the spirit walk in the spirit now the last and but not the least that i have here when it comes to walking worthy of the calling upon your life is that you must walk circumspectively did i pronounce that right circumspectly <laughs> now i'm gonna find the scripture that, that actually talk about that i'm gonna go into ephesians chapter 5 verse 15 to 16 that we must be walking circumspectly and it's important for us to walk circumspectly but let me read it first before I talk a bit more about walking circumspectly. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 15 to 16. And it says, See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Verse 16 says, Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. We must be walking wise in these times, people of God, because the days are evil. We must be redeeming that time. I'm not sure if you guys realize this, but I realize it that 
time is getting shorter and shorter and shorter the days are going by like it's nothing by the time by the time it reached 12 o'clock in, in in the evening or afternoon i should say the day is basically finished so time is getting shorter and the bible talks about the time getting shorter for the elect's sake so when time gets shorter we should be walking wisely we should not be out here you know fooling ourselves believing that we are in the right when we know that we're in the wrong we should not be out here fooling ourselves we should be walking circumspectively not as fools but as wise seeing that the time is getting shorter and shorter and shorter and this goes to show that as the time gets shorter we must be tightening up more and more we must be tighten up our walk with Christ more and more and more we should be walking in the ways of the Lord more and more so walk circumspectly I'm gonna also read I'm sorry I'm gonna also read at least two more scriptures before I end this one this one is beautiful this one is very very beautiful guys ensure that you share this out to your brothers your sisters your mother your father your pastor your preacher <laughs> and everybody you can share it out to all right because i will be having more teachings like this of bringing you through scriptures while i teach because it's very important to build your faith by the word of god so we're going to go to first peter chapter 4 um verse 18 to verse 19 and it says here and if the righteous scarcely be saved where shall the ungodly and sinners appear wherefore let them that suffer according to the will of god commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator now let's read it one more time let's read at least the first part of verse 18 one more time it says and if the righteous scarcely be saved you're gonna scarcely but scarcely sorry scarcely be saved if you're walking on the path of righteousness even you are gonna scarcely be saved scarcely mean hardly be saved so can you imagine those who are walking on the path of righteousness they are gonna scarcely be saved it's no time to play around people it's no time to play around with your life so walk circumspectively not as fools but as wise redeeming your time making use of your life making use of your time in the most godly way possible playing around with God playing around with your walk playing church being lukewarm seeking acceptance from man and not from God will not cut it will not cut it if you guys realize that those who are working for Satan they are very disciplined those who are working with even here in Jamaica we, we call them dead spirits they say that they have to be disciplined the disciples the word disciple is it, it comes from the word discipline so we must be under some form of discipline every other religion has their disciplines so in so in the relationship with god in christianity quote unquote christianity we must have our discipline as well those who work for satan even witches have discipline witches get up certain hours of the night to do certain things people who are in the illuminati they do certain things right they have to stand up in circles they have to perform certain sacrifices they have to do something so we as christians should be under the godly discipline you cannot be living loose you cannot do what you feel like you want to do you cannot say what you feel like you just want to say we should be a part of a discipline as well the true religion quote-unquote religion the true walk with god majority of our people in this true walk with god does not take it serious but yet those who are serving false gods and demons take what they are doing serious it is full time for us to be walking circumspectly not as fools but as wise redeeming our time let's also read one more scripture before we leave and it's in acts the book of acts chapter 17 verse 31 oh sorry chapter 17 verse um yeah i think it's 31 it says here because he has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man 
by that man whom he, whom he has ordained, whereof he has given assurance unto all men in that he has raised him from the dead. So that time is coming. The judgment is coming, people. That day is going to come and we shall be judged. Matter of fact, if you die right now, you're going off into judgment. People, walk circumspectively. Not as fools, but as wise. Let me just leave you with one more scripture. Just for your faith. Just to build your faith. The word of God is quick. It's powerful. And it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Let me give you the word. And also, I'm going to do a, 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 a video on the importance of the word of God as well. So guys, ensure that you subscribe and stick to. Um, so that when the, the, notification, the, the, the notification comes out. Forgive me for my stammering. The notification comes out. You can get it. Um, Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 14 it says here for God shall judge every work into for God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing whether it be good or whether it be evil let us live a good life let us walk wise because everything that we do here and even everything that we say here shall be judged people of God walk worthy walk worthy of the calling upon your life Let's go back to the scripture that we start off with and then we're going to end this video with the scripture that we start off with. So we start and we're going to end with this. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1. It says here, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. God bless each and every one of you. Hope this one was very edifying. Oh, this one was really good you know i believe i did my justice i did my best to bring across the word to you um i pray that this really builds you up build you up in your most holy faith as our time gets shorter and shorter as the world gets much more serious and serious we must become much more serious and serious with our walk with god so thank you very much for, for, for joining in remember to leave that like for the algorithm for it to spread Share it out with your brothers and sisters and stay tuned for more videos account to God's grace and His will. Until the next video, Shalom. Peace, grace, and mercy from God through our Lord Jesus Christ.